I want to cover how baseball players can increase bat speed by 9%. And we're going to start right now. Now, one of the biggest things that we can do, obviously, is watch someone like Shohei Otani, Mike Trout, John Carlos Stanton, even though he's not the best with his hand-eye coordination, he's an absolute powerhouse. Vlad Guerrero Jr. You, know, you watch these baseball players actually hit the ball, you study their mechanics, and you can learn quite a bit. But what research has been done? What has been done that we can sort of see and actually look through the research of science-based practices and see who has used computer simulated models to then educate specific baseball players and then research, okay, if we change this type of sequencing, do we see an improvement in performance of bat head speed? And that's where this study comes into play. Kazumuchi, Burke, Kawamura have done this specific research and the titles optimized simulation of upper body timing on the production of bat head speed in baseball batting. And so what we can see is they actually took 23 collegiate baseball players. All right, and they took these 23 collegiate baseball players and they put a T down and they started to analyze what are their different movement patterns. So based off of multiple different target points and actual sensors, what type of movement processing are we seeing? And then is there some type of computer simulation that can help educate these individuals to actually move more effectively? Now, the great Tony Gwynn, arguably the greatest batter of all time. I love watching him bat. As far as just pure batting is concerned. Yes, Barry Bonds, Throughout the steroid discussion, let's just think about him as an overall hitter. Freaking fantastic. Ted Williams, freaking fantastic. Otani now, unbelievable. But if we watch Tony Gwynn and we even listen to some of the things that he would talk about, he would talk about controlling from the knob. So controlling the bat from the knob and then the knob would then control the barrel. So we've got to take that as a point of education. Now, if we can get into what Kazumuchi and Burke started to identify and see their results, we can see, okay, if we have a T set in place and we make slight changes to the sequencing and delay certain joints, we might see an increase in bat speed. And that's actually what happened. They saw an improvement in overall bat speed from 35 meters per second to 39 meters per second for a 9% increase in bat speed. And what does that do? That enables the individual, the batter, to one, pick up the slot of the pitcher's arm very early. So you can pick up the slot of the pitcher relatively early, at least in the sense that if I know that I can swing faster, I can delay slightly and I have a longer time frame to make a judgment. It's still a very quick time frame, but it's a long enough time frame that it could potentially lead to more increase on base percentage or, or a better batting average or better scoring percentage, anything along those lines. So if we understand that we can fix the speed of our sequencing or the speed of the bat head, that in turn will also probably lead to better power hitting as well. So we should be able to improve our capability to get on base more, and we should be able to increase our power hitting as well. Two huge factors in the world of sabermetrics. So what did they end up figuring out? When they saw that the bat head speed increased to 39.2 meters per second from 35.6 meters per second, the optimized timings were characterized by the earlier timing of the barrel side elbow supination. If we're a right-handed hitter, that barrel side would be my right hand. That's the barrel side. Wrist radial flexion, okay, so wrist radial flexion is also going to play a major role and this is all earlier timing so it's doing these things earlier it's achieving elbow supination earlier torso right lateral flexion is another thing that happening a little bit earlier okay in our sequencing and then finally getting into the later timing of the barrel side shoulder abduction so that would be the later a delay here with the shoulder okay so this is abduction a slight delay and when we start to think about that i actually look at that shoulder abduction for a hitter as a counter movement it's actually going to lead to a slight bit of a stretch shortening cycle that then leads to better recruitment through that joint and then in conclusion the skillful coordination of the individual joint movements for the upper body can produce a higher bat speed through effective sequencing of proximal to distal movement so what I want to do is if we can understand that delaying the shoulder abduction and then leading to earlier elbow supination, 
leading to earlier right flexion of the radial flexion here, leading to right lateral flexion through our trunk. Okay, so we have better trunk control that leads to a little bit earlier flexion through the trunk. And then in turn, having that come through, that will lead to better bat head speed. And this doesn't discount what Tony Gwynn would talk about with actually controlling from the knob. So if we're factoring in the knob, and then we're also thinking about what this research says, we can actually try to really optimize our overall performance. So now we're gonna go into Vlad Guerrero Jr. and what he does as one of the best hitters in the game and see if, is he doing this? And then how can we apply this long-term? Okay, so here we go. What a great freaking shot here. Now you can see too, the other thing that they factored is that when they were doing this study, this is Kazumuchi, uh, and Burke, they were only analyzing the bat head speed starting when it would get over three meters per second. So at this point, there wouldn't be too much of bat head speed then. Probably right now, right there, is when they would start to actually gauge that. So we can see that little bit of a counter movement and we can see an early here. So what we're seeing there, as Vlad Guerrero Jr. here, as he's stepping forward, the elbow starts to rise a little bit away from the trunk. That essentially is that delayed shoulder abduction. Okay, so delayed shoulder abduction. And then as he starts to step forward with that stance, you can see now that's leading to adduction of his shoulder. And in turn, he's achieving elbow supination. Okay, so he's starting to achieve that elbow supination right here. And then that, is gonna be what controls. So we're still looking at what's happening with the knob with his left hand. And then in turn, what's he doing with that right elbow? He's leading to supination. And at this point, we're seeing that trunk position where he's got a little more flexion through that hip. And so now, and, and flexion through that ab here. So that's shortening up. But when that shortens, that creates almost like a spring. So that's gonna spring and then help him really rotate through here. And then we can see how that radial flexion here, supination in the elbow. He's got that flexion in the torso. Now that leads to that faster bat head speed, makes amazing contact right here. And this is the position that they're looking at. Okay, this is the position that we can work towards. And then we're making contact. Somebody like Vlad, he's making contact fully grounded there. And then you'll see that his weight shifts and his right foot will slide back behind him because his energy is getting into the ball. He's really rotating phenomenally. We'll see this again. So right here, we're sort of missing on Vlad here. We're not seeing that counter movement, but mainly because this is later on, the frames are later on in his actual swing. What we're gonna see is a really, really good angle here. Okay, so now you're starting to see on that wrist, that right wrist, we're starting to see, he's already starting to achieve that radial flexion early. He's got that step forward. The bat's starting to move probably well past that three meters per second. Now we're gonna see that abduction was delayed and now earlier timing, Okay, he's achieving, you can see here, as he's dropping his hands, he's already starting to achieve that elbow supination. As that elbow drops, that's happening very, very early in his swing relative to other batters. And you can see right here, this position basically is showing you that he's had that for quite a while. And there's quite a bit right here of radial flexion on that right wrist. That's gonna help pull through. And he's already done a good job of controlling the knob with that left hand. Okay, but that counter movement from up top then also leads to that torso flexion in the right side. And then that's gonna enable him to come out of that as a super elastic spring-loaded individual. Boom, okay, send it to the moon. So if we can analyze these data, again, look at that. Boom, that's so nice. Here's another one, a little jumpier here, but you can sort of see this is lower. So that's adduction as he strides. There's delayed abduction, okay? So that abduction occurs up top. He steps forward. He drops the elbow for elbow supination with that wrist radial flexion. Then that right lateral flexion leads to come through. Okay, so the big factor here is that when we're training our baseball players then, one, we have to understand what is, based off the optimized simulation of upper body timing on the production of bat head speed in baseball batting, those mechanics are gonna be key. We can train those mechanics on a tee. And then the other big factor is that the strength and conditioning coach or whoever the coach is that's responsible for resistance-based training should have comprehension of those mechanics, okay? They should have comprehension of the mechanics and the speed of the mechanics. And then they should be able to use things like rate coding principles 
to actually improve speed of activation in those different positions, which then in turn should lead to even more speed on the bat. If we have more speed on the bat, we have a better chance to understand where the movement of the ball is gonna be, and then that's gonna help us connect more frequently. So we've gotta take all those principles. We can look at someone like Vlad Guerrero, but then we can take that information and look through the data, look through all the research, the science-based data out there, understand what that has to do, and then as a strength coach, educate yourself on, okay, what are general movements that we need? What are technical coordination movements? What are very sport-specific exercises? Test your athletes, create these benchmarks, and and then build out that system. And that's exactly what we do inside of Peak Strength. If you guys go to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, the Apple iOS Store, you can download Peak Strength for seven free days of training. And then inside the program, click on baseball. And that program is gonna be developed based around what you need physically to improve that swing, to improve that throwing arm, to improve your overall fielding. And when you look through that lens of periodized programming with over 700 different exercises, we're gonna help you achieve that dominance out on the diamond. Because remember, freaks, if you wanna become a champion, you've always gotta cultivate your power. Peace.